Now, my next question is, now, uh -huh. now I do believe that it is important to uh -huh. have a healthy uh, pride in our race, all right? To be proud of where you yeah. came from. You know, yeah. God created us the way he did. Exactly. For a reason. So I think it's yeah, healthy. Exactly. <laughs> so how do we, and this was one of my wife's questions, how do we diminish the racial aspect of religion so that people's hearts can be turned to the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, while we is, is, you know, we feel like it's OK to have pride in our race, but mm -hmm. some people take it too far. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah. I've run into those people. Um, so let me see. Uh, so basically, your question is. Uh, how we I don't know. Can, can, can you ask yeah, that? Yeah, that? Like, that, that like how can we have a, a healthy balance? Oh, OK. In, with our you know, faith and then with yeah, our between our faith and and not take it too far. I remember, and I and, and I, I don't I don't condone any of his teachings now, but uh, yeah. I used to love Carlton Pearson, right? right Back okay. in the day, it was like one of my favorites, <laughs> right? But he yeah. did make a statement. He said, "Whenever God," and this was back before he went into the whole universalism thing, right? But uh, he made a statement. Or uh, Oral Roberts and I, and, right, right, right. Yeah, okay, <laughs> he made a statement. He said, "Whenever God tried to bring." revival to the black church we turned it into a civil rights movement wow. so so how do we balance out our having our faith in christ but yet at the same time not going too far in having pride in our race and before we do man elder mike is watching he my said brother. my bros good to uh -huh. see you brother alton the man <laughs> on the show yes sir yes yes sir, sir. yes sir Hey, we all need to get together one day, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, the balance, I, I'm going to say for myself, um, and, and this is what, what I do. When I was growing up and I watched, like, for instance, like my, my great grandmother and, you know, my grandparents and all of them, they, they lived in the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to um, this happened to me maybe about a couple of years ago. There was a lady, I don't know if she's still alive or not. Her name is Doris Payne. Okay. Okay. Now, Doris Payne was, she was famous for, she was called the International Jewel Thief. Okay. okay. And she was a black lady. And what she did was that she's, she's famous. She's been known for like taking just, I mean, some of the most expensive jewelry in the world. You know, I mean, she's, yeah, she's been in like, you know, Sweden and, you know, parts of Europe and she's been caught like plenty of times. And, and she's like, she's, she was really good at, at stealing jewelry. Wow. So I do property management and one day I get this work order. I'm in Midtown, Midtown Atlanta. And I don't, I didn't even know who the lady was. All I know is that I walked in there and, um, I think she was, she was having a problem with her tub or something like that. And I was going to go take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And her bathroom was right across from her bedroom where she slept. And there was, you know, the TV was on and, you know, it had the news. And I think the whole, um, I think George Floyd riots and stuff was kicking off. Okay. And they were just showing people out there with the Black Lives Matter and all of that stuff. Now, mind you, this lady is like 80 something years old. She had to be like, she's probably in her 90s now, but she had to be like 87, 88. Okay. And she's sitting there looking at the TV and she's like, how come everything is always about race? Mm -hmm. You know, she was just like, I just don't understand how young folks today who didn't, who never went through any of this stuff. She's like, I grew up in the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like, I grew up in, in, in Jim Crow South. I think she was from Ohio or something like that. And actually, uh, ironically, I'm in Ohio, but I think <laughs> she was from Ohio. I think she was from Columbus, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And. She said that she grew up in a time where, you know, Jim Crow laws and, and you know, there was segregation and stuff like that. But she said that it was it wasn't as bad as a lot of people tried to make it seem as it was. OK, so even like like I said, my grandparents and my great grandparents, like they lived in the civil rights era. But one of the things that they always did was keep us grounded in the word of God. They always taught us that the word of God was 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 our foundation, no matter, you know, our skin color or anything like that. You know, the word of God is our foundation. Um, and I think that us as a people, 
if we can get our feet set in that firm foundation in Christ, you know, um, I think we'll look at racial issues and we'll look at the state of the black community in a totally different light. You know, you don't really have um, this whole mentality as in, um, you know, oppressor versus oppressed. Mm -hmm. You you become a problem solver, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why even during the civil rights movement, there were a lot of things getting done through the church versus these other black identity groups such as um, the Nation of Islam. You know, and I mean, you had the Hebrew Israelites at that time, but they wasn't, you know, a, a, a popular group at the time, but they were out there. But that's why politicians and, and, and people, well, you know, people who can get things done, they, they were able to sit down and, and talk to the church because the church saw the problem, they saw the issue, and based on the foundation of their faith, they took that and went to the proper uh, people that who could make the change. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the people who were being hypocrites, the people, the lawmakers who were saying that, hey, we hold to this Bible and we're governing by this Bible. By these people having that firm foundation in their faith, already having a relationship with Christ was able to say, no, when it comes to the Bible, this is what it actually says. So you're actually um, in error, in contradiction to what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And they were able to rally the people together and say, this is how we conduct ourselves as Christians. I mean, we're going to be, you know, humble, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we're, 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 you know, we're not going to be pushovers. We're going to be firm. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have to go down and march, we're going to stay within the confines of the law, just like in Selma, Alabama. You know, when they weren't allowing uh, uh, black people to vote or or anything like that. And they said, we're going to go down there and we're going to march peacefully, you know, and we're going to be within the law and within our human right. And we're going to go down there and we're going to we're going to make sure that these laws get changed. But it was all because they had that foundation in Christ and they had a biblical uh, blueprint, if you would, to say this is how we conduct ourselves. And this is what. Uh, this is the standard that we should hold others to, you know, especially those who, who claim to be, uh, you know, fellow believers in the faith. So in conclusion, what I would say is that there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, being uh, or, or understanding your identity or, or your heritage or anything like that. You know, I mean, I love African stuff. Um, you know, like my wife, um, she loves her head wraps and stuff like that. So I buy her those. Um you know, I mean, I love my pork chop, my ribs, my <laughs> collard greens. I ain't need no hog moths, though. <laughs> but, you know, me being a black man, it's what I am. You know, mm -hmm. I can't change my skin color, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to change my skin color. You know, people know, pe when people look at me, it's, it's evident that, that I'm a black man. I can't change that. You know, I have a certain background. I can't change that as well. You know, there are some things that I like to do as a black man. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when it's time for me to get into that word, into that scripture, I push everything else to the side yeah. and, and I'm zoned in and I'm locked in on what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, ultimately, we are Christians first. We're believers in Christ first. Um, yes. Everything else, everything else. Because when you look at it, it's really a spiritual warfare. You know, it is. When we, when we stand before God, he's not going to judge us on are you black? Are you Correct. white? Are you Hebrew? Right. Right. Yep. I've Are seen you. Did you accept my son, Jesus Christ?